the average density and the critical density the average density of the universe as we know what is the formula for density the density is mass over volume so mass divided by volume what we'll get we'll get the density and we'll call we'll call this as average density of the universe but this average density is not accurate why again there is uncertainty in average density the uncertainty in average density is due to the dark matter because the known matter is only 5% and remaining rest 25% is a dark matter the matter which we are not able to detect so due to the presence of the dark matter we have uncertainty in the value of average density then what is critical density critical density is the density which is calculated by using the hubble's constant or hubble's law so critical density is a density of universe calculated by the hubble's law by using the hubble's law that's called a critical density and this average density and the critical density comparison actually decide the fate of the universe because there are theories which state that the universe might be a open universe means it will continue to expand or we might have a flat universe flat universe means it will reach to its maximum size and it will remain at uh, or the size will no longer change or we might have a closed universe closed universe means that a universe is expanding a time will come when it it start to contract and we'll have a big crunch like big big bang means the explosion which leads to the separation of these galaxies stars the stellar object these are all the theories so these theories based on the comparison between the average density and the critical density and how critical density is calculated so how we calculate this critical density as we know according to hubble's law that v is equals to h not d means the value of v the speed the recession speed is equals to the hubble constant multiplied by a hubble constant multiplied by distance so we can say uh, v the speed is equals to h not d now so we have the cluster of galaxies they have the mass m and there is another galaxy of small mass m this is a cluster of the galaxy with the cent center of the mass denoted by capital m so this galaxy is moving away from the center of the mass of the cluster of the galaxies the speed at which this galaxy is moving that is called v and the distance between the masses the centers the center of the cluster of the galaxy and the ga small galaxy m that distance is denoted by r so according to hubble's law v is equal to h not d the higher the speed uh, the high, greater the recession velocity so as the galaxy is moving it will have a kinetic energy so we can say kinetic energy which is half mv square and we know v is equals to h not d according to hubbles and d is the distance so in here r or d it's the same thing because instead of substituting uh, d i can substitute r or i can say v is equals to h not r so in place of v if i substitute h not r so it will become half m and in place of v it will be h not r and whole square 
so it will become h not square so this will be half m h not square into r square that's a kinetic energy then because it is moving away so according to conservation of energy uh, it's as it's moving so its kinetic energy is changing into potential as the distance from the center is increasing so try the potential energy which is given by mgh or work done which is equals to force into distance and according to newton law of gravitation the force between the two particle two mass uh, objects is given the gravitational force is equals to g mass of first object mass of second object and square of the distance between them so this will be equal to r square multiply by distance between them is r so when i simplify it will become g mass of the uh, cluster of galaxies mass of the singular galaxy divided by r that is the gravitational potential energy so if the galaxies is escape means go out from the or cover some distance so in that case the potential energy should be equal to kinetic energy and what about the density like we can further simplify this potential energy formula as we know potential uh, mass density is mass over volume and we are considering this cluster as a sphere so i can simply write that g is equals to density into volume m by r and density volume because it's a sphere volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube so g is equals to density and volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube into small m the mass of the small galaxy divided by r so this will cancel so what we are left with we are left with uh, g is equals to 4 pi uh, 4 pi r square uh, density mass divided by this 3 will be there so this will be 3 this is a gravitational potential energy and if the gravitational potential energy because the, when the critical density means that the object will like we'll have a flat universe it reaches the maximum size so kinetic energy is equals to potential energy so when we compare the two values the kinetic energy was half m h not square r square and potential energy was g 4 pi r square density mass divided by 3 so when we solve this formula for density that density is known as a critical density which is equals to 3 h not square over 8 pi and the gravitational constant g so this is the formula for calculating the critical density so critical density is calculated by hubble constant and every density is calculated by the known mass of the universe and the volume mass divided by volume will get the every density is it clear the derivation of the critical density but again both have uncertainties why both have uncertainties because if the critical density is calculated by hubble's constant and hubble constant is having a higher uncertainty the data is spread out for different galaxies so it's not the critical density is having a higher uncertainty as well as we are not sure of the every density is only calculated for known matter and maybe the dark matter or proportion of the dark matter might be different that may leads to a different value of the average density so when we compare the two values is it clear this derivation of the critical density so when we compare or about the we discuss about the fate of the universe 
we have three possibilities that a universe might be an open universe it might be a flat universe or it might be a closed universe so these are the faith about the universe and these this faith depending on the comparison between the average density and the critical density so if the density of the universe which we found the average density is less than the critical density so if average density i am denoting average density rho not is less than the critical density then we will have a open universe so if i sketch a graph for the time since the big bang and the size of the universe time since the big bang and the size of the universe we might have an open universe where open universe means the size of the universe continue to increase but the rate at which it is increasing that will change that might slow down but it will continue to increase that's called the open universe we might have a flat universe what is the condition to have a flat so basically if the density of the universe every density of the universe is less than the critical density the universe will continue to expand and that is because the gravity would be too weak to stop the expansion like the value which we calculate for density the known matter very small quantity of a known matter is there so that is not able to produce enough gravity if that is not able to produce enough gravity the universe will continue to expand or we might have a flat universe flat universe means that if the density of the universe is equal to the critical density then the universe will stop expanding at the time and remain in this size forever so the condition for the flat universe when the average density is equals to the critical density then we will have a flat universe and how we'll have a graph for the flat universe this is for the flat universe and then the third possibility flat universe means like the energy which is needed to hold the universe the basically the gravity which is needed to hold the universe is enough so that will keep it constant does not allow it to expand does not or not able to expand so we have the first possibility we might have a open universe the second possibility we might have a flat universe and the third possibility when the average density of the universe is greater than the critical if average density is greater means we have more matter in the universe than what we calculated if more matter is there means greater gravity if greater gravity is there then everything will come to one point or it will collapse so we might have a closed universe right now we are at this point like we are not sure whether we have it depends on and why we are not sure because there are a lot of uncertainties even in the value of the average density and even the value of the critical density so this is the faith of the universe a universe might be open might be flat or might be closed if it is a closed universe we call that as a big crunch 
that everything will again come back to one singularity means sing everything will come to singularity or one point as that is started with a big bang is it clear and these all have the why we are not sure why we are un having a greater uncertainty because we don't know how much uh, we don't know the about the dark matter we we know don't know about the dark energy so the fate of the universe is unknown because the density of the universe cannot be calculated and from a light we receive from the star in the galaxy we can calculate the star luminosity like we can calculate the power and this measurement measuring a flux using that we can uh, work out the distance between the star and the galaxy uh, distance of the galaxy and using that uh, we can find the speed of the galaxy but practically the speed of the galaxy at which it is moving is totally different from what we calculated and that leads to the concept of a dark matter and as the uh, galaxies the space is moving the particles moving away from each other continuously this leads to a dark energy so the dark matter is not emitting out, out any electromagnetic radiation so it cannot be detected directly so this is about the fate of the universe these are the possibilities that a universe might be a closed universe might be open or universe might be a flat then stellar evolution about the stars there is a hertzsprung and russell diagram So this diagram shows or compare the temperature and the luminosity of different stars. So it is comparing the star temperature with the luminosity. And it's having in the X axis is a temperature which is in, in a decreasing order. And on y axis we have a luminosity or power so this scale can uh, it's like uh, you can have 24000 uh, kelvin then uh, 12000 kelvin then 6000 kelvin then 3000 kelvin then 1500 kelvin and so on and this is a luminosity uh, like 0.5 1 what is the meaning of luminosity one it's a it's a relative luminosity relative luminosity means luminous luminosity compared to sun like compared to sun how much uh, power is there how much energy is coming on unit area in one second then it will be 1.5 and 2 so in this diagram when they collect the data for different stars, mainly this is for stars. So when they collect the data for different stars, this is how the data is spread out. That the stars which have low temperature will have low luminosity. The stars which have high temperature will have high luminosity. And it is obvious if you remember uh, the Stephen Boltzmann law that luminosity is directly proportional to the fourth power of temperature. So that's true. This graph Hertzsprung Russell diagram shows the relation between the luminosity and star. And our sun is here, the position of the sun. 
it's about like 6000 or 5000 the surface temperature and luminosity one we have stars which have luminosity more than sun uh, if they have luminosity more than sun it means they uh, they have high temperature we have stars which have luminosity less than sun means they have low temperature than sun that's why their luminosity is low but we have some of the stars even though their temperature are low even though their temperature is low but their luminosity is high and there are some stars even though their temperature is high but their luminosity is low so what is the reason for that why uh, different clusters because the luminosity not only depends on the temperature of the star it depends on the size of the star luminosity is directly proportional to size as well like you as we know when we compare the stephen boltzmann law that luminosity is proportional to size as well as fourth power of temperature so these are these the stars which are following the sequence these stars are called the main sequence stars means their temperature is low luminosity is low temperature is high luminosity is high but some of the stars are not following the sequence why the some of the stars are not following the sequence is because their size is different So this region, what we have, we have red giants. Or super giant, red super giant. The type of star red giant or red super giants. This region, even some of the blue giants are here is known as a blue giants. So we have red giants or red super giants here. We have uh, blue giants in this region. And what are this? These are known as the dwarfs. The stars, even though their temperature is too high, but their size is so small, that's why their luminosity is small. Like um, here, what happened? The temperature is higher as well as size is bigger. So this is not in the main sequence. For dwarfs, what happened? Their size is very small. Even though the temperature is too high, that's why their luminosity or the power is too low. Is it clear this idea about the types of the stars? Red giants are there. Uh, blue stars or blue super giants are there and this region where we have a sun that's called the main sequence star then the life cycle of the star life of a star Basically, the life of a star is divided into four st stages. One is called a protostar. Another one is pre-main star. Then pre-main uh, sequence star. And then the post-main sequence star. And then it will be the end of the star. So first, how the uh, formation of a star occur? How the star form? That is known as a protostar. Basically, what is a protostar? Protostar, it contain uh, like hydrogen, a small amount of hi mainly hydrogen and helium. And it also contain dust particles, which we also call a stellar gas cloud or stellar cloud. And what happened in these clouds, the density, like it's a mixing up 
of the particle particle will collide with each other they are mixing with each other so random fluctuation in the density result that some region the atoms are closer and some region the atoms will be away and that will result in an increase in density because the region where the particles come closer to each other gravity will increase and that will attract the other particles so atom from the surrounding area also attracted and this region become large enough to produce a protostar so the stage is the star formation the first one is a protostar what happen in a protostar like clouds of hydrogen helium mainly hydrogen is there helium dust randomly fluctuate the density result in increase in density and when the density increases means more matter is there the gravity will also increase basically like we have hydrogen particles we have helium we have dust particle so they are continuously colliding so that, what to happen that leads to a cluster or a region where the particles come closer the particles are closer that leads to a stronger uh, means higher density in the region or stronger gravity in that region so it will attract the nearby things nearby particles and that is the start of the star that's why we call that as a protostar so as the atom in a protostar become closer together they lose their gravitational potential energy and they lose in the balance to increase the kinetic because like potential energy what happen it changes into kinetic energy and while the density of the cloud is sufficiently low infrared radiation to pass through it and thermal energy is radiated so in the beginning the star is emitting out infrared radiation or ir radiation then what happen then it will become pre main sequence star so what is pre main sequence star a pre main sequence star what happen as the gravitational collapse is there in a protostar gravitational collapse means due to gravity the things will come closer to each other so it become opaque to infrared radiation like the particles the cluster in the beginning there are spaces available so when potential energy changed to kinetic energy it was emitting out infrared radiation ir but as the particles come closer to each other what it will make the gravitational collapse does not allow like it will make this star opaque as it become opaque the infrared radiation cannot escape now so as the infrared radiation cannot escape this will heat up because if infrared radiation cannot escape so this will heat up the star the particle will move faster and heating up within the protostar star increases the pressure so two things happen it will become opaque for ir increases the temperature of star or kinetic energy and as it increases the kinetic energy the radiation pressure will also increase so what is the radiation pressure radiation pressure radiation tend to go outward from the star the infrared radiation and the gravitational force will try to keep the star try to bring these particles closer to the center that's a pre main sequence star is it clear till now we are discussing how the star form 
now as the energy is sufficient enough energy is there now what happens it will start to undergo a nuclear fusion reaction because hydrogen can undergo a fusion reaction so it will become a main sequence star that's the third stage so as it become a main sequence star this was the first one a proto star a second one pre main sequence the third one main sequence so what is the main sequence star so in a pre main sequence star what happened the star continue to increase the temperature and eventually the temperature is sufficient and density is already there so it it can undergo a hydrogen fusion and this hydrogen burning or hydrogen fusion the star will become a main sequence star this is what our sun is our sun is also a main sequence star it undergo a hydrogen fusion so initially the proto star is too small but eventually the star reaches a equilibrium in which the energy radiated by the star balances with the thermonuclear fusion uh, uh, produced in the thermonuclear fusion balances with a gravitational force so energy radiation pressure is outward and the gravitational pull uh, uh, gravitational pull is inward but that is keeping a balance so the size of the star is not changing in this region so in a main sequence what happen as the temperature increases the particle undergo a nuclear fusion reaction they are closer and the temperature is high the radiation pressure is outward and the gravitational pull is inward still it's keeping the size constant because both have a balance equilibrium if the radiation pressure is high the star size will increase if the gravitational pressure is more it means the star will collapse then what happen in the post main sequence means after the main sequence once the hydrogen is used up so in the post main sequence what happen once the hydrogen which is there in the core of the star is used up the state of equilibrium is broken why state of equilibrium is broken because now initially the radiation pressure which is pushing the star outward the molecule outward is balances with the gravitational force which is inward but as the hydrogen fusion used up the star will radiation pressure will decrease it means the gravitational pull is more so the star will the size of the star will decrease some hydrogen burning still continue but the size will decrease and it will the core will contract as the gravitational energy changes to kinetic again then there will be a increase in rate of energy output and increase in energy output cause a star to explode or start to expand and then it will become a red giant so basically uh, in this part what happen that we are used up the in the core hydrogen is used up as in the core as the hydrogen is used up now hydrogen is is very small proportion of a hydrogen is able to undergo a nuclear fusion so as a small proportion of the hydrogen is able to undergo a nuclear fusion then the size of the star as a radiation pressure you can see is more and the gravitational pressure is uh, sorry gravitational pressure is more and the radiation pressure is small the size of the star will decrease as the size of the star will decrease the temperature again increases and as the temperature increase the star will expand because as a core basically what happened the core then contract and it reduces its gravitational energy and increases the temperature and this increase in temperature will increase the rate of energy output so and suddenly the radiation pressure suddenly increases as the radiation pressure suddenly increases the main sequence star will now become a red giant so it all started with a proto star 
it started with a protostar the protostar will be here in this region then it will become sun like star then it will become red giant and after red giant we will discuss what can happen after red giant a possibility is there that it might change to white dwarfs so sun right now what we observe now it's the main sequence star on sun we have a hydrogen fusion but once the hydrogen fusion used up the sun temperature the core temperature in the beginning it will decrease because the fusion is used up and due to decrease in the size again the temperature increase and which cause the expansion of the sun and when the sun will expand and change to red giant so it is believed that it will take the orbit of the venus till the orbit of the venus is will expand is it clear now but the sequence the stellar evolution depending on what is the start of the what is the starting mass of the protostar if a protostar is a like like uh, same like the mass of the solar mass like uh, 3 times or 5 times or below 3 it will have a different result as compared to when it is a massive protostar is it clear the star cycle uh, the formation of the star the death of the star means after red giant what can happen or what could happen then it depends on it depends on the size of the star the size of the protostar but right now we are here and then sun will be a red giant and according to sun like stars it will be a white dwarf but if it is a massive star then there is another possibility any question till now is it clear so i'll repeat what happened in the formation of the star first we have a protostar the protostar means we have a dust hydrogen helium they will have a different proportion of the mass some region more mass so gravitational pull will bring the particles to the core and that result in a pre main sequence star as the temperature will rise as the temperature of the core is sufficient it will undergo a hydrogen fusion that will be a main sequence star and once a main sequence star hydrogen fusion used up as like sun like stars it the size will radiation pressure is reduced so size will decrease as the size is decreasing potential energy change to kinetic means the temperature again increases and that increase in temperature increases the radiation pressure which increases the size of the star again and that change to red giant any doubt in this